Everyone, welcome. My dog is standing out there wondering what's going on. So I'm just gonna shut the door. Take a couple minutes just to let people fully arrive. Um, really glad that we can spend some conscious time together <laughs> on a big day. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Barb. Hi, Bill. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Deb. Hi, Emily. Gretchen. Julie. Kimberly. Mwah, Lori. So many of you beautiful people I just got to spend a week with are here. Maureen. Michelle. Ria. Hi, Sarah. Mom. Hi. Hi, Natalie. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, happy to be here with all of you as well, sharing space, connecting, being here for all the feelings, right? All the feelings. So already about 58 of us. So um, clearly we all have a desire to come together with some unity and um, just in sacred space together. So I've been doing these Wisdom Wednesdays for gosh, a year and a half at least. And I've taken a little hiatus for the last, I would say four or five months, just been going through a lot of personal shifts and changes and needed to be going inward and taking care of space in here instead of being so externally focused. Um, I was getting ready to bring back Wisdom Wednesday in the beginning of the year, so 2025. And then I was looking at the dates on the calendar and realizing that this Wednesday, first Wednesday of November, would be the Wednesday after the election. And having a sense that it was going to be important for us to all meet and be together, no matter what the outcome of the election was. And so I decided to schedule it. And clearly so many of you are resonating because you've shown up. Uh, no matter how you voted, no matter how you hoped the election would turn out, um, what was clear to me is that our country is deeply divided. That there's such a deep split and kind of duality that we're all living in right now. And as one of my wise teachers has said, there is a reason <laughs> that we're all here right now at this moment in history together. And each of us has a part to play in uh, what I believe can be some healing uh, in this deeply divisive uh, country and world essentially that we're in. What I see, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Michelle. This is a newly painted room. My house is going on the market in a couple of days. So of course, all the pictures are down. Uh, worse yet, I think um, about this imbalance that we're all seeing, this divisiveness, is that um, this imbalance has seemed to be somewhat normal, like we've normalized it. We're used to this deep split in this country. Um, we might even say we've been somewhat acculturated to a split like this. Uh, it seems that hate and fear, uh, prejudice, bullying, rejection, not only have these things all become accepted, but we all know that it's what um, the politicians have used, right? There's more hate ads than love ads. There is more ads about what's wrong with the other person than hope about moving forward. Um, and I realized probably in a deeper way this morning as I sat in my own meditation that so much of my life work and so much of my own personal healing has been about working with the deep split in my own psyche and in my own self. Um, and that, of course, has sort of ballooned out to working with other people. And I, you know, my my love and my study and my expertise has been in the mind-body split, right? How our bodies and minds can be on such, such separate programs. Um, and yet, clearly, I believe there is the possibility of deep healing and the coming together of the opposite energies that we all hold in ourselves 
which now I think we're seeing out in a bigger stage. So there's a deep adage, so within, so without. So what we're seeing out there, a deep split and a deep war and a deep fighting between what seem like opposite poles is also in all of us or it wouldn't be showing up in the external world. And I believe that what we do have control over is our inner space, right? And what's happening inside of us. This is also why I think I was drawn to yoga 25 years ago. The word yoga means to yoke. It is a bridge between opposite forces. It is a way to bring together what feel often like these tension of opposites. Uh, these opposing energies that we feel, we see, <laughs> we have them in us, we see it playing out in the world around us. Um, it's not new. And in fact, uh, these tension of opposites may actually be um, a chance for growth and potential. So one of my deep teachers that I have been reading and studying and will forever be studying is the great Carl Jung, who I speak about so often in these things. I go back to his work over and over because I truly believe he was ahead of his time and that he spoke so clearly about how to really hold the tension of opposites. In fact, he believed that the greater the tension of opposites, the greater the conflict, the greater the contrast, the greater the potential. So he said great energy, right? And great growth potential comes from holding these tension, this tension of opposites. Um, I just learned recently that at the end of Carl Jung's life, which would have been, um, I believe in the, the 1940s or 1950s, he, um, it, was, it was sort of the beginning of the Cold War, the deep split between the US and the Soviet Union. And Carl Jung was asked what he thought of it, what he, he thought about this period of time, this time where um, the real possibility of atomic war was very present for people. This is what he said. This is so phenomenal. And I think it speaks so well to where we are right now. So he asked, you know, Carl Jung was asked, do you think there's going to be war, atomic war? He said, I think it depends on how many people can stand the tension of opposites in themselves. If enough can do so, I think the situation will just hold and we will be able to creep around the innumerable threats and thus avoid the worst catastrophe of all. So let me say that first sentence again. I think it depends on how many people can stand the tension of opposites in themselves. So I truly believe that what we're all being asked of right now is can we stand in the tension of opposites in ourselves? Right? Each of us is being asked to work with integrating our own light and dark, our own inner masculine energy with our inner feminine energy. This is not an easy task. This is a task that, oh, I feel like I've been at for a long time. It's not an easy task. It's not for the faint of heart to really work with balancing these energies. And yet, as Carl Jung said, if enough of us, he didn't say all of us have to do this, if enough of us are willing to work and stand in the tension of opposites in ourselves, he does say a third way begins to open. So he believed if we can hold this tension of opposites, this light and dark, fear and love, you know, rejection, connection, if we can hold all these various opposing forces, because they're all in us, like we'd like to believe they're in the other, <laughs> the other camp. We'd like to believe it's all about the other camp, but we are all holding these opposing forces in ourselves. And if we can hold them, if we can see them, if we can be with them, if we can actually not reject them, <laughs> but be with all of it, be vast enough to hold all of it. Jung said there is a third way that always emerges and can transcend the opposing forces. So this is deep hope for me, right? If we can learn to hold the opposing forces, 
there's always a third way that begins to emerge. Now, he did say the third way often doesn't come quickly. It's not, it doesn't come immediately, right? It might take a long time for it to gestate and to come forward. But if we're willing to hold and be with both of the opposition forces, there is a third way. Oh, we're at 84 of us. Thank you all for being here. All right, I'm gonna share one quick slide because you all know I love to share slides. Then we're gonna meditate. This is the real point of today is I want us to be together with our attention of opposites. And we're gonna work into something called the central channel, which is the channel in our own system, which is the channel of healing and wholeness and actually joy. Um, that's where we're going. But I do wanna show you a visual because I think visuals are really powerful. Okay, these are the three, there, there are um, in the yoga tradition up to 72,000 energy channels in the body, but there are three main ones. And I believe they, um, they really speak to this time that we're in and they really speak to, I think this call that we all have to hold the tension of opposites in ourselves and to move towards the center. So, these energies, there's an energy on the left called Ida, and there's an energy on the left called Pingala. And then there's a channel in the middle that these two energies sort of flow through. It's called the central channel, Shishumna. So the one on the left, Ida, is actually considered the moon channel, the night channel, the dark channel, the feminine channel. And so, by the way, we all contain these energies, whether you identify as feminine or masculine or trans, no matter how you identify, we all hold these energies. So it's not about our gender. It's about um, opposing energies that are equal. So the left side and the right side, ideally, are equal energies. They're not the same. They hold different qualities, but they are equal. And when they are equal and in flow, we open into this very clear central channel where again, all healing is possible. So the left side, Ida, is considered the feminine channel, the moon channel, the, the night channel. It is the unconscious mind. So it carries uh, our memories, it carries our conditioning, carries our wisdom. Uh, joy is an essential quality of this left channel. And it is the channel of sensitivity, nourishment, uh, intuition, creativity, community. It's why there's 84 of us here today. There's something in that left channel that called you here. Our left channel is definitely impacted by our emotions, our feelings, and our desires. And it is meditation that often helps clear this channel. The other channel on the right side, again, it's an equal channel. It's not superior or inferior. It's the same. That's how we're meant to be. It's meant to be equal. The right channel, Pingala, or Pingalu, as it says on this uh, particular slide, represents the solar, our solar energy, our masculine energy. It's the part of our energy that creates a sense of self. It is our ego self. It's also where we uh, engage in the world. It's our capacity to take action, to plan, to uh, move forward. It is a fiery channel. It's dynamic. It's assertive. It's logical. It's rational. We need them both. Now, can you all see <laughs> that what our culture has really placed much more emphasis on is this solar channel? It's the action, it's the fire, it's the doing, it's the power, it's the money, right? And we place so much emphasis on this right channel, whereas what we need to acknowledge is that both channels are necessary and equal and important. And when they are in balance, we have deeper openness in this central channel. So let's talk briefly about Shishumna. It's where everything comes together. It's the middle path. It's where healing and spiritual growth and consciousness reside. It is where there is timelessness and wholeness and unity and freedom. 
When we are balanced in our central channel, we feel freedom, we feel peace, we feel and know the interconnectivity of all of us. Because no matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent or none of the above, we are all connected, right? We are all interconnected. We cannot deny the truth of our interconnectivity as humans. So where I'd like to take us today is into a meditation. <clears throat> And it's a meditation to help us tap into the central channel, because I believe this is where the answers and the healing and the wholeness resides. Um, so we're going to do self-study today. We're going to begin to see internally, where am I imbalanced? Where am I not holding the tension of my own opposites? Where do I need to reclaim more of my feminine, more of my moon, more of my Luna? Or where do I need to claim more of my masculine, my fire, my action? Um, each of us have our own particular balance that we're working through. So hopefully this meditation just brings us into a little more awareness and a little bit more inner peace. And we're doing this in a group of 84 of us. So there is great great, beautiful power here this morning in the collective. So before we start the meditation, I want to teach you what's called central channel breathing. It's a powerful breath technique. We'll start with about three or four rounds of this just to really settle us up, settle us into this middle path, the central channel. And then we'll move into some exploration of the tension of opposites. Plenty of room for all of us to feel all the feels, right? The pain, the fear, uh, the sadness, the letdown. Also, maybe glimmers of hope. Remember, there's joy on that left side, right? Even in the midst of this, can we hold the possibility for all of it? So central channel breathing starts with something called Hakini Mudra. Mudra is just a particular hand position that um, allows specific energies in the body to come together. So as you bring the tips of your fingers together, you actually are integrating right now your left side with your right side, your feminine side with your masculine side, and you're holding it actually right in the middle of the central channel. The central channel runs from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. So we're working right here in the middle. I'm going to scoot back for a little bit so you can notice when we start the breath technique, this mudra is going to be fingers pointed down. On an inhale, we're gonna pull up the energy. And by the way, we're pulling up earth energy, which is feminine energy, mother earth. We're pulling all that up into the heart. The hand position pauses, fingers forward in front of the heart. Pause the breath, hold the breath. And then we'll exhale as we extend that mudra up into the sky. Then we'll inhale, pull energy of the sky. This is the masculine consciousness, awareness down into the heart again, pause the breath. And then exhale, that energy moves back down. So we'll repeat, inhale, hold in the heart, exhale up, inhale, pull down, hold in the heart, exhale down. So you'll get the hang of it with me. I just wanted you to be able to visualize the hand position before we start this. So let's start with Hakini Mudra. Tips of the fingers touching space between the hands, creating all kinds of space for us to hold all those tension of opposites. And then for now, just drop the hands down and the lap fingers pointed down. All right, let's take a deep breath in. Before we start central channel breathing, just settling into yourself. Feel your feet, feel your feet on the earth. Feel your back being supported by the chair you're sitting in. Allow your five senses to wake up. And you hear the sounds in the room where you're sitting. And can you hear the sounds beyond the room where you're sitting? Notice any particular smells or taste. Feel where the air surrounding you is touching your bare skin.
and really notice where the tips of each of your fingers come together in union, holding those hands right in the central channel of the body. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, see if there is any part of your body or your mind or your heart that could soften. Let's actually take another deep breath in. Ah, take a nice sigh, make some sound as you exhale. There's a lot of built up tension. Do that again, breathing in. Ah. And taking one more of these, allowing yourself, if you're in a space that feels safe, to really let out some sound, release a nice big sigh as you release the air from the lungs. Now, as you continue to feel a sense of groundedness, so feeling your feet on the earth, or feeling your pelvis in the chair, we stay grounded, we stay embodied in our own sense of stability. We all carry stability, no matter how much chaos is swirling around us. We all have a deep capacity to ground in ourselves. So taking this moment to really feel earth, groundedness, connection down. So as we stay aware of our connection to the mother, mother earth, ground, stability, nourishment, We'll begin this process of central channel breathing as a way to unify the disparate energies in our own being, to balance the left and the right hemispheres of the brain, and to drop us into more unity and more wholeness. So let's together again, take a nice deep breath in. And following the breath out, feeling your awareness dropping down into your feet or into your pelvis, awareness of your fingers pointing down. Now on this next inhale, as you inhale, you're pulling your hands up the body, breathing into that heart. Pause your hands and pause your breath right in the heart. Now, as you exhale, it's as if you're exhaling or breathing up and out through the crown of the head as your hands lift up overhead. Pause the breath out. Now, as you inhale, it's almost as if you're pulling the energy and the expansiveness of the sky, father sky, down through the head into the heart. Once again, we pause the breath in, hands softened in front of the heart, and on the exhale, those fingers point down that breath moving down the body, out through the pelvis, out through the soles of the feet. Once again, breathing in as we pull earth, feminine, mother, up into the heart, pause the breath in. As we exhale, we breathe up and out through the crown of the head. Now on this inhale, we pull the energy of the sky, which is considered father sky, the masculine consciousness down into our heart. We're attempting to balance these energies right in the heart. And then as you exhale, that exhale moves down the spine, back down into the earth. Let's do this central channel breath two more times. Inhale, Pulling up Mother Earth, healing, nourishment into the heart. Pause the breath. Pause your awareness. And now exhale, extend that breath up and out through the crown. Arms lifting up overhead. Inhale, we pull awareness, light, space down into the heart. 
Everything merges in the heart. And now exhale, breathing down, fingers pressing down, hands moving back down towards the earth. All right, one more of these balancing central channel breaths. Inhale, pull that awareness up through your feet, your pelvis, pulling those hands to pause right in front of the heart. Hold the breath in. Now we exhale, breathing up and out through the crown. You can even gaze up towards sky. And now we inhale, we ask for that beautiful rational consciousness to come down and merge in our heart. As we exhale and release our energy and our breath back down to Mother Earth. All right, from here, as we proceed into the next piece of the meditation, you can either keep your hands in Hakini Mudra, it's the mudra of integration, resting in your lap. You could also release your hands, palms face down on your thighs. Or you could place one hand on your heart and the other hand resting gently on top. Of course, the heart is the energy place of where we integrate, where we integrate the night and the day, the masculine and the feminine, the rational with the intuitive. our very human energies with our higher, more spiritual energies that all merges in the heart. So really allowing your attention and your awareness to be in the heart. And just holding space when we are asked to hold the tension of opposites, we are asked to be in as much space as possible. And from this sense of groundedness, as well as openness, and from this awareness of the state of our heart, I ask you to become very aware, just the left side of your body but just for a few moments, it's as if the right half of your body has disappeared. And what's online or what you're aware of is the left side of the body, the left foot, the left hand, the left sit bone, the left shoulder, the left side of the face, the left temple, the left side of the head. And with a curiosity, and without a need to change or fix or alter what you might find in the left side, just a willingness to be present, notice what you're feeling. Our left side does hold our emotions. There might be grief or fear, or sadness, maybe there's anger. The left side often holds our history. It also holds our wisdom and our intuition, our inner knowing. 
So as you stay present in your left side, plenty of space to see it, to be curious, to notice the pain, notice Whatever is showing up, whether it's showing up as sensation or emotion, or through imagery, honoring your lunar side, your feminine side, your feeling side. And staying with whatever is rising for you, even if it's a sense of numbness. It is in the meditation that we learn to be there for whatever shows up, even if it is scary or monstrous or challenging. the commitment to showing up for all the parts of ourselves, honoring all the different aspects that we carry. So just a few more moments, staying with your left side. The emotion, the feeling, or the void. Thank you. Now we express gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, left side. Thank you. Thank you for all your holding. Thank you for feeling. Thank you for intuition. Thank you for carrying my lineage. Thank you for softness and receptivity and compassion. Thank you. Whether we deeply know our left side or not, we extend gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then when you're ready, feeling your awareness begin to shift into the right side of your body. Again, just for the time being, it's as if the left side goes offline and the right side begins to light up. The right foot, the right leg, the right hip, the right hand, the right shoulder, the right side of the face, the right temple. Awakening the solar side of the body. The fiery side of the body the logical, action-focused part of the body. And again, we hold space for all of it. We all hold these opposing forces inside of us. And as you choose to stay with your right side, be curious about what you feel, whether it's pain in the body, whether it's fire in the mind, or 
whether it's a focus towards action, or again, maybe there's numbness, maybe there's almost a void in this side of the body. And there's no right or wrong. We're just holding deep curiosity and a willingness to hold all of it. Staying present for the images, the feelings, the sensations, the awareness as you hold your attention in your right side. What do you notice? A few more moments, staying with whatever thoughts, feelings, images, or experiences are unfolding for you as you remain with your awareness in the right side of your body. Now we come into the merging of the left and the right, the night and the day, the solar and the lunar, the dark and the light, the intuitive and the logical, the being and the doing. So if your hands are not in Hakini Mudra, I encourage you to bring this mudra back online where the fingertips are lightly touching. And just allow that mudra, that hand position to rest right in front of solar plexus. Shoulders are relaxed, arms are relaxed at the side of the body. And fingertips are pointing forward. So now we bring our awareness and our focus into the central channel of the body. Again, it runs from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. It is said that this channel is where all healing occurs. And when we are balanced in our left and our right, the central channel is also balanced. There's a sense of timelessness in the central channel. There is a sense of wholeness. There is a remembrance that all is okay, all is well. Take a moment to arrive with your awareness in that central channel. in the space of integration. Without needing to move your hands, you might reconnect to your breath. And as you inhale, imagining in this central channel, this column of lights, as if you're breathing from the base of the spine to the crown of the head on the inhale. And as you exhale, you're moving from your crown back down to the base of the spine. 
So just moving awareness and energy breath from the root to the crown as you inhale. And from the crown to the root as you exhale. Couple more breaths like this. The great poet John O'Donohue speaks about central channel as being authentic. So as you continue to breathe up and down the spine, receive the wisdom and the beauty of these words from John O'Donohue. An authentic life is a life that is aware of and willing to engage its own oppositions and honorably inhabits that threshold where the light and dark, the masculine and feminine, and all the beginnings and endings of life engage. So an authentic life is a life that is willing to engage its own opposition. That's what we're doing. So we say thank you, thank you, thank you to the right side. I apologize, I forgot to do that. Thank you, thank you, right side. Thank you for focus and determination and action, fire and engagement. And thank you, Central Channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the hope and the space where we can actually allow these opposing energies to finally emerge and merge and find more wholeness, more balance. Thank you, thank you, left. Thank you, right. Thank you, Central Channel. And as you bring your hands together in front of your heart, you just take a moment to bow inward. Ah, oh, such deep gratitude to so many of you who I know are interested and willing and open and ready to hold this tension of opposites. A willingness to work on your own personal imbalance as a way to heal, not only self, but to heal culture at large. I'm so grateful that there are so many of you that are in, and are here to do this healing work. The light and the dark in me <laughs> honors that same opposing force in you. May we all continue to show up and live from this central channel of balance. Namaste. Thank you all for your presence and again for being willing to stand and hold the tension of opposites that are in you. And I really believe that this is one way forward. Of course, I believe there are multiple ways forward, but one thing we can do is to really hold all of that in ourselves. Um, so within, so without. And I also believe my teacher, Dr. Chopra, said that it doesn't take everyone to awaken. It just takes a 
proportion of us to be the tipping point towards more love, towards more community, towards more connection, towards more healing. So appreciate all of you. Um, I'm seeing people wanting um, some of the quotes that I share. And so I'm going to take a moment to put those into um, the chat box for everyone. And um, I really just love and appreciate all of you and um, just your willingness to keep doing the work. Sometimes it feels overwhelming, I know. And um, there is grief and there is change and we all fear change on some level. Um, and yet I also see such courage in all of us for continuing to show up. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, and thank you for all the beautiful words and these feedback, Liz. So lovely to see you today, Rivka, Martini, Angelica, Margaret. Thank you. All right, I'm going to write some of these in. So I'm going to type. Um, let's see. Let's use that. Let's do that John O'Donohue. An authentic life is a life that is aware of and willing to engage its own oppositions and honorably inhabits that threshold where the light and dark, masculine and feminine and all the beginnings and endings of life engage. That is the Irish poet, John O'Donoghue, who passed away recently. Beautiful words. And then was there one other Carly Young that someone wanted? Put this one in here too, the greater the contrast, the greater the potential. Great energy comes from this tension of opposites. That's Carl Jung. All right. Mm, Janet, so lovely to see you on here. Yeah, and I um, am with Deborah on this. Thank you all for being here um, because um, we're all in this together, <laughs> right? We are all in this together. Um, and Suze, I'm so glad that you feel less anxious, right? And yeah, it's powerful to hold space together. Love from Canada. Jung dies in 1961. So you're right. He probably um, spoke to the Cold War in the late 50s, early 60s. Yeah, and Tia, the, the meditation just came from my own practices and experiences. I did, um, gosh, within the last year, I really kind of figure out that central channel meditation. I loved Kini Mudra always. And I knew that there was some breath to really clear central channel. And so, yeah, just in the last year, it really felt like pulling that feminine energy into the heart and pausing it and then exhaling out through the crown, pulling masculine in and down, and then taking it back was a real connector. And so I've been just personally practicing this um, for, gosh, probably the last year and a half. And it's been really powerful. But I, I wish I could say it, it came from somewhere. I think it just came from my own practice and experimenting with what works in my own system. So I'm glad to hear that it worked for you as well. Yeah, central channel is so crucial and it's so, um, I feel like we don't speak of it very often. Um, and I do think it's where all of our healing and our wisdom resides. And so the more we can balance and move into that central channel, um, yeah, it's helpful, really helpful in this polarizing time as well. Maureen has an unexpected sense of calm. And I know, Maureen, that is um, a lot coming back from 
retreat in Peru, right? And coming back home to to life. Um, so I'm glad that you found some calm. All right. It's really lovely to see all of your names and um, I wish you could see your faces, but um, I feel the love and I feel the connection and I feel hope, right? You know, sometimes we can wake up and feel like, oh, you feel so down and dark. And there is hope because there's so many of us that um, really are leaning towards love and hope and connection and healing. And um, that's all we can do. All right. Mwah. So much love to all of you. Stay well. Stay centered in your heart. Take nothing personally. <laughs> and keep extending love to the culture at large. It needs us um, who are willing to work with balance more than ever. All right. Love to you too.